What's up, everyone? Welcome back to yet another MLB recap. We have a lot to talk about today. Shohei Otani hit a home run on a pitch that almost doesn't make sense. Like, it was an inside pitch. He was able to somehow get his hands inside that and go the other way. Makes no sense. Aaron Judge had a multi-home run game. The Pirates unfortunately lost O'Neill Cruz after a scary play at the plate. And Nelson Cruz, he looks like he's 28 years old all over again. Remember, everyone, if you're going to any baseball games or concerts anytime soon, use code FUZZY on SeatGeek to save yourself 20 bucks off your entire order and also, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button because we're on the road to 450,000 subs. Now, before we talk about yesterday's games, I did miss Saturday's game, so I'm going to do a little fast cast with Fuzzy. We saw Bryson Stott with a walk-off single. That ruined a 12-strikeout masterclass from the Reds' Nick Lodolo. Nolan Arenado, he blasted off for his 300th career home run. He is going to walk into the Hall of Fame. He will be a unanimous Hall of Famer, in my opinion. We had another special home run, even though it wasn't a close ball game. Andrew McCutcheon, his first home run as a member of the Pirates, the first since 2018. We had Trout and Salvi saving the day. They both blasted off for three-run go-ahead home runs, and also Rafael Devers as well as Stone Garrett. They led the way on Saturday with five RBIs apiece. So those were all of the biggest highlights, in my opinion, from Saturday. Let's talk about the Easter games. The Guardians and the Mariners. This 2023 Guardians team is going to take at least 10 to 15 years off of my life. Almost every single game so far has been a thriller. Like, I'm cool with the close game every so often, but we need a blowout here soon. George Kirby, he ate Cleveland's offense alive, allowing just one earned run over six solid frames. Probably going to be a two-to-one final score because both bullpens for the Guardians and the Mariners, they're elite. Nope. Seattle, they grabbed an insurance run in the ninth, and the rookie, Will Brennan, he came in huge with a two-run double to tie it. So this one goes to extras where we have kind of a back-and-forth game again. You have Jimenez and Brennan. Brennan comes in clutch a second time. They bring home two in the 11th to tie it all over again. Seattle, they yet again find themselves with a lead just an inning later. And Cleveland, of course, they make the comeback. Josh Bell, he wins it on a moonshot. Look how far that went. <laughs> Josh Bell's been really bad. Three for 35 with a zero OPS plus. Guys, I mean, uh, what's left to say at this point? Wander Franco homered again. He now leads the AL with Aaron Judge. We'll talk about Aaron Judge in just a second. But four home runs on the season already. Brandon Lau, who hit 40 home runs or almost 40 home runs back in 2019. He's back doing his thing. It's so nice to see him healthy. That's a grand slam and honestly a channel changer because hard hitting Harold. I mean, at this point, why even watch the rest of the game? You knew how it was going to end. The Rays ended up with 11 runs in this game. The Oakland Athletics. A whopping zero, nada, no run scored as Drew Rasmussen, he is leading the league in innings pitched, ERA, FIP, almost everything after tossing another shutout. It's a win-win trade for me. The Brewers, they got Willie Adamas. The Rays, they got Drew Rasmussen. They've both been very good. We'll talk about Willie after this game. The Rays are the first team in 20 years since 2003 in which a team has started a perfect 9-0, but also they're the first team since the late 1800s to have a plus 50 run differential in the first nine games. They are bullying everyone, not just winning barely, they are absolutely dismantling teams. So because we talked about Drew Rasmussen, we also talked about the win-win trade, the fact that the Brewers, they got Willie Adamas in return for Drew Rasmussen, and let's check in on Willie. That's a two-run double for an early lead as the rookie, Jordan Walker, he singled in Nolan Arnato. So Jordan Walker, he's 20 years old. He has a nine-game hitting streak to begin his career. The only player to do that who is younger than Jordan Walker, Ted Williams. Just an absolutely insane name drop right there. Adamas, he upped his batting average to 344 on a second home run of the season, all for the super underrated, at least he's underrated in my opinion, Freddie Peralta, who turned in six innings, seven strikeouts, only one run allowed. I'm so happy that he's back and healthy as well. And my God, please, please, baseball gods, have this unlock something. Yelich, he doesn't hit cheapies. Like when he connects on a home run, it still goes 420 to 450 feet. He is still very good at hitting baseballs hard, but the slugging percentage is just, it keeps on dropping. He has 36 home runs over his last 340 games. He had 44 back in the 130 games back in 2019. As Milwaukee, they improved to 7-2 and two on the season. From one high-scoring game to an even higher-scoring game, 23 runs total were scored in this crazy Easter game. Renfro versus lefties is not fair. Neither is this guy versus lefties, righties. It doesn't matter. How did Shohei Otani hit this baseball 405 feet the other way? He's up to three home runs and eight RBIs. And on the bump, he has 18 strikeouts, only one earned run allowed in 12 innings. I mean, this guy could put up a 15-war season if he stays healthy. Logan Ohapi hits a home run on Easter because of course he does. That's his third of the year. He's going to get some serious rookie of the year love. That home run though, it seemed to upset Matt Chapman and the Jays. Watch this. In the blink of an eye, Reed Detmere's gem was ruined by just two players. Matt Chapman and Kevin Kiermaier, they combined for 10 RBIs. Chapman, he is leading baseball in hits, 
doubles, RBIs, batting average. Kiermaier is hitting a cool 400 through his first eight games. He tied it up in the 10th after LA reclaimed the lead. Then you have Springer putting the A's out in front by two as Toronto. They nearly gave it away, but ultimately Tim Meza, he got his first save of the season after the Halos were threatening. So both teams combined for 23 runs and this game only went three and a half hours. That's not bad at all. A year ago, that would have been a five hour game easily. Now, before we talk about the Astros game, I got to talk about this Phillies team and their bad bullpen. Philly, they were facing off against Connor Overton, which it should have been an easy W. Like, no offense to Reds fans or Connor Overton, but he's not that good. They quickly go up 2 to nothing versus Connor Overton until he got some run support from Tyler Stevenson and Jason Vossler. They tied it, and there it is. The tie is no longer. Alec Bohm, he connected for his second home run, and I'm thinking, there's no chance that the Reds make this comeback against Sir Anthony Dominguez. Yeah, Jason Vossler has 17 extra base hits and a 135 OPS plus over his last 44 games. Jake Fraley, he's been raking as well. 13 home runs at a near 360. 60 on base percentage over his last 75 games. Then you have Ian Jabot nailing down the save as the Reds grab their fourth win of the season. The Phillies bullpen has a 6.75 ERA. They have been a huge part, probably the number one reason why the Phillies are just three and six. We just saw Matt Chapman and Kevin Kiermaier put their team on their backs and Chaz McCormick did the same thing for the Houston Astros. That's his second of the season. He has very quietly been amazing over the last 126 games. He has 16 home runs and a 115 OPS plus. Very, very good if you ask me. He then doubles the score in the fifth and Hunter Brown, he turned in his longest MLB start by far. Seven innings, seven strikeouts, two hits, zero earned runs. The only run that he allowed to score was an unearned run, so really wasn't even his fault, but he's got to be their number three or four starter going forward, not behind Jose Urquidy or Lance McCullers, but that's just my opinion. Pena, he doubled in Jordan. Pena has a weird start to 2023. He's been productive, but he's striking out a ton. Speaking of striking out a ton, Brian Abreu, he caved the side in the eighth inning. He has 98 strikeouts over his last 66 innings. He is disgusting. Ryan Presley, he closed it out as Houston. They finally get back in the win column, and they're now four and six on the year. The Diamondbacks offense, they are not messing around this year. And at least on paper, they should be able to continue this because all the way from their leadoff guys to the bottom half of that order, Arizona is now tied for seventh and run scores after they put up a fat 11 spot without hitting a single home run in this one against the Dodgers. They had 16 base hits and five stolen bases. They lead baseball in steals, by the way. Every single Diamondbacks hitter had an RBI. Well, aside from Josh Rojas, but he scored twice and went three for five. So we'll let him off the hook. Pavin Smith, he led the way with three RBIs. I didn't realize that they called him back up, but that's because Kyle Lewis, he is injured again. I feel so bad for the guy. He's back on the IL, injured again. He just cannot stay healthy. But yeah, the Diamondbacks, they're going to be a lot of fun to watch for a long time to come. The Padres and the Braves, the 63-year-old phenom cannot be stopped. Nelson Cruz got all of that one. 435 feet, his second of the season. Grisham, he popped one soon after. He is looking pretty good, if you ask me. And there's Nelson with his fourth RBI of the day. Ha Young Kim then brought home Nelson Cruz. Kim has been a monster over the last two seasons. 33 doubles, 13 home runs, 12 stolen bases, and 12 runs saved defensively over his last 159 games. And then there's Nelson again. This time it's a single, so he had six RBIs and was just a triple away from the cycle. Dude is hitting 350 with a 202 OPS plus. San Diego, of course, is getting the most out of the oldest player in baseball. He's 42, by the way, not 63. Seth Lugo, one earned run, six innings. He has been a godsend out of that rotation after he was a very reliable reliever for the Mets. The Pirates and the White Sox. All right, so we got a bit of drama in this one, but we have Johan Oviedo and Michael Kopech. They both entered the arena and they accepted the challenge. They both turned in fantastic performances. Kopech, he allowed one earned run over six. He's got to be happy with that. Even though he takes the L, he's got to be happy with his outing after he gave up four or five home runs against the Giants in his last start. The Pirates, they tried to stack on another run for Oviedo, but they were unable to convert and they lose O'Neill Cruz in the process. White Sox catcher Sebi Savala had some choice words for O'Neill Cruz. He thought it was a dirty slash late slide. Unfortunately, Cruz is going to be out for the next four months, but the surgery, it was successful. They were able to stabilize the bone and he's actually going to be okay after the all-star break. Oviedo, he almost threw seven. Shut out. David Bednar, he converted his fourth save in nine games. The Pirates, out of nowhere, are now six and three. They're not top ten in run scored or ERA. They're kind of just middle of the road, yet they're six and three. The Yankees and the Orioles, I always love watching these games because the Orioles,
Orioles always seem to play very well against the Yankees, but this year, the Yankees, they're trying to kind of reverse the curve. Stanton, he is looking locked in and ready for a huge year. He has 84 RBIs over his last 118 games. That's nuts if you ask me. He also has 34 home runs in those same 118 games. You know what else is nuts? The newest Yankee captain, Aaron Judge, he hit two in this game, so sit tight. We'll show the second one in a second, because now it's time to practice our French. Okay, sorry, that was an awful and cringe transition, but I have to talk about Franchi Cordero. He is making Baltimore pay. Like, it's ridiculous they dropped him after he hit 400 in spring. Both of his home runs in 2023 have came against the team that dropped him, the Orioles. So yeah, revenge has got to feel pretty sweet if you're Franchi Cordero. Nestor Cortez, he weaved his way through nearly six innings. He came away with a few walks on five strikeouts, and Judge, he got some of those runs back. Well, one run to be exact on a solo shot. He is leading the AL in home runs already. He's hitting 313 with 66 home runs and 18 stolen bases over his last 166 games. Adley Rutschman, he tried to rally the troops with the second home run. He's almost hitting 400 on the season, but Clay Holmes, he's back to being the Terminator. Three saves on the season already. The Marlins and the Mets, I hate seeing this as a Cookie fan, and I'm not talking about chocolate chip or oatmeal. Carlos Carrasco, we call him Cookie. Brian De La Cruz, he got all of this one. He launched that pitch for a nearly 400-foot home run, a three-run tater. The Marlins offense, they stayed stacking runs versus Cookie. Jazz got in on the action with an RBI single single and Mets killer Garrett Cooper brought everyone home on a two run home run. Garrett Cooper has a 122 OPS plus since 2020. So you got to put some respect on his hitting abilities. Braxton Garrett had seven strikeouts in four and a half innings or something like that. The Marlins send the Mets to a five and five record on the season. New York is bottom 20 in run scored and team ERA. They got to get going soon. The Rangers and the Cubs. Texas was already up a few when Marcus Simeon decided to take matters into his own hands. He doubles the lead on one swing. He makes it four to nothing and he needed that because for the second season in a row he's been horrendous to begin the year he was terrible in the month of April going into May all of 2023 speedster Bubba Thompson showed off his tools in the fourth and sixth inning he laid down RBI double and then an RBI triple with that top two percent sprint speed he is one of the fastest players in baseball Semyon and Seager they both drive in a few more and they are making a combined half a billion over the next few years so yeah they better get it going and fast the Texas Rangers surprisingly are now sixth in team ERA after John Gray was pretty solid in this one they're not allowing a ton of walks or home runs, which is huge. We have a pretty fun game on our hands. Jerks and Profar and Elias Diaz, they delivered in the clutch with some monster course Field home runs. They both went 415 plus feet. Profar, he's been a stud defensively, not so much in the batter's box. He needed that, his first home run as a Rocky. Colorado's pitching, they do what they usually do. They implode, par for the course. That's when Elias Diaz, who is now hitting 300 with a near 135 OPS plus in his first 10 games, he brought it back within one. And there's Chuck Nasty or Charlie Blackman, if you're his mother and you're watching this, you're not. The near 37 year old won't go down without a fight. He's hitting 325 with three extra base hits over his first 37 at bats. Then you have McMahon with the free RBI after a bases loaded walk and the bullpen for Colorado, they actually held out. They gave Pierce Johnson a one run lead and of course he converted it yet again. We know that Daniel Bard is still on the aisle with anxiety and joining him in terms of anxiety and the injured list is Austin Meadows of the Tigers. If you don't remember, he used to be on the Rays. He was traded to the Tigers. He is now out for Detroit with anxiety. A lot of people are going to have some negative things to say, but I'm going to go ahead and applaud Daniel Bard and Austin Meadows for putting their mentals at the forefront of their game. Yes, baseball is a physical sport, but it's mental as well. Things off the field are happening, so I just want to remind you guys, it's okay to not be okay. You're not weak for asking for help. Please talk to someone. Anxiety is a real thing. Don't mess with it. The Red Sox and the Tigers, they did face off yesterday as Cutter Crawford shaky start to this one turned around as Cutter started using his cutter a little bit more often. Zero runs over his next four innings. Cutter's offense, they delivered instantly with Tristan Costas finally looking ready to break out after this game. His RBI ties it and Boston they kept on scoring for Crawford who tossed five solid innings with six strikeouts no walks allowed. Costas he has seven home runs in his first 103 at bats as a big leaguer but the contact and the strikeouts have been brutal. Kenley Jansen he struck out two in the ninth after getting himself in a ton of trouble. I believe that he caved the bad man, my uh, my guy Akil Badu with the bases loaded, I think it was, and the Boston Red Sox win 4-1. to one. Chris Bubich is looking like prime Johan Santana to start the season. He faced off against the Giants yesterday, and check out the stat line. Zero walks, zero earned runs, nine strikeouts in just six innings. That is flat out really good. If the Giants offense were a fire, he smothered it with a blanket. Now, the problem is it's April, and his arm is not fully loosened up, so he was taken out after just 76 pitches. San Francisco, they immediately 
immediately take advantage of Bubich being out the game. You have Wilmer Flores versus a lefty. We know that Flores is a known lefty killer. He ties it, and Michael Conforto with his biggest hit in years. We know that he was out with a shoulder issue, and I'm just happy that he's back, even though he's striking out a ton. He's going to get better at that as the season progresses. Three home runs on the season after that lefty-lefty nuke seals it. Tyler Rogers was called upon to get the save, and he got it. The Giants win 3-1. to one. That does it for today's recap. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure that you leave a like and subscribe. We do this every single day. Again, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for all the support, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.